Hello, all my asynchronous learners. Again, I am Professor Riddle. I'm your instructor for this course. Um, and I'm doing this video today because the prior modules that I've done, um, I have created you know, different text explanations, or I've shared some videos, or I've had you do some activities. And my hope is that that has been enough to help you understand the prior concepts that have been taught. This concept today, Universal Design for Learning, is a little bit more complicated. And so I felt like having this instructional video where I can talk you through it um, as well as provide you a few examples might make this concept a little bit clearer. Um, and so this will be part one. And in part one, I just want to kind of give you an overall conceptual understanding of the framework. And then in the next video, I'll go a little bit deeper with showing you some of the principles. So as you read in your reading this week, UDL, from a conceptual standpoint, um, is all about removing barriers and making things more accessible for people. So much like the building example, we want to make sure that if you know, you're in a wheelchair, or you have certain preferences, that the building is still accessible to you. So in education, we're doing the exact same thing. We are trying to make the educational experience accessible to every student in the classroom. And so sometimes when we talk about equity right, or equality, as you see from this example here, and I'm actually gonna go into full uh, slideshow mode so you can see. Um, when we look at equality, right, and we're saying, okay, well, we're going we're gonna to provide, you know, equitable access to people, we may uh, faultly think that, like, well, we're just going to provide everybody this one thing, and then that should have, you know, make it equal for everybody. But as you can see from this picture, that doesn't always work, right? With equity, uh, the challenge is, you know, we're, we're trying to basically provide things where people can have access. And so now you can see all three people can see, right? Um, but this can be a little bit challenging for us if we're trying to provide individual supports for each person as we're trying to instruct and give one lesson. And so as you can see, what UDL tries to do is create a simple solution for all people um, and so that it's accessible for everyone. So as you can see here, that they can still see the game because with UDL, I've created, I've created basically a universal um, access accessibility or accessible form. I'm not saying that right, just a universal um, accommodation that allows everybody to have access. Um, so what you'll see with UDL, it's a mix of both of this, but we really try to get mostly to this, right? Let me give you one more quick example. So I just want you to imagine that you are you know, enjoying the beach or wherever you're at on a hot day, and then you see the ice cream truck pull up. Now, I know, like most of us, right, I'm hoping that you're in the same boat that I am. You're just super excited for ice cream. You're super excited for a cold treat, especially on a hot day. So you walk up to the ice cream truck and you see right there kind of, I, I'm pointing like you can see, but you can see uh, the menu, right? And this is not necessarily the exact menu on that car, but you get the idea, right? And you can see the plethora of options that are available to you. And so you're starting to think, hey, maybe I'm like a, a fruit guy or a fruit girl. Um, or maybe I like, uh, you know, characters or something chocolate, but you're just excited for all the different options. So you, do, you know, you go up and if you're like me, a big chocolate lover, you might uh, essentially say you want like, you know, a cookie or, you know, kind of chocolate drumstick and you express that to the ice cream truck guy. Now to do your dismay, here's what happens. As you say, this is what I want. The ice cream truck driver says, well, that's all I have. Now this is what UDL seeks to um, fix or correct. And this is exactly what happens in the education system. We have students that come and they have different engagement needs, right? They're engaged differently. They have different things that interest them. But we provide a universal curriculum that only meets, you know, one student or one learning preference. Um, and so again, I don't want to misuse the word universal, but that's essentially what we do is we provide a single curriculum that only fits one student or maybe a majority of students but leaves a few students out. And so that's what UDL first principle, at least, that we're going to talk about in the next video that UDL tries to correct is providing a plethora of options to engage as many students, if not all students, into the lesson. Now, principle kind of number two here the UDL seeks to correct is this idea of what if the way you like to eat your ice cream um, you have a certain preference, right? And so maybe for you, you're more of a cup person, right? Like, ah, I don't wanna hold something, I don't wanna get my hands all messy and sticky, but that cup is nice because I can eat it with a spoon and hopefully not make too big of a mess. But again, as you go up and ask the ice cream truck driver, hey, I, I would like, you know, that fruit cup. I'm sorry, all I have is this firecracker popsicle, which again, comes on a stick and it may be too messy for you. 
Same thing in education, right? The way that we represent the curriculum, the way that we deliver the curriculum to students may not always be beneficial to them and may not meet their needs. And so we try to provide then multiple options for students, much like the ice cream truck menu, in order for them to have access to not only the things, not just engagement access, right? Like not to be interested in the curriculum, but also to be able to learn the curriculum in a way that best meets their needs, right? And so that, that it's represented in a way that would make sense to them. The final principle is, uh, let's just say you settle on, you know what, I'm hot, you know, I want something cold, fine, I'll go with the firecracker popsicle. And you go to pay, right? And so you pull out, like most people would, their card, hoping to pay with their card. And of course, the ice cream truck driver says, well, I only accept cash. So this would be the final kind of barrier that UDL seeks to remove, which is the assessment barrier, right? The way that you demonstrate your knowledge or represent, not represent, excuse me, demonstrate the way that you understand the curriculum. And sometimes we tell students, well, you have to write a paper or you have to show me your knowledge in this way. You can only pay for the ice cream using cash. Um, and UDL seeks to remove that and provide, again, a multitude of options and ways in which you can demonstrate your understanding or in ways in which you can pay for your ice cream. And so that's what we're gonna focus on in the next video is some of the principles and get a little bit more concrete. But conceptually, that's what UDL does, is it tries to remove the barriers of engagement, representation, and assessment, um, or what UDL will call action and expression, in order to allow multiple access points so that all students will learn, not just a majority of students.